Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. What an opportunity that the Lord has granted us. We are blessed um, beyond measure. Um, even the word blessed is uh, does not bring out the full meaning and the depth of what really happened and what the blessing is all about. Every word that we use about God's kindness, God's nature, or anything that comes from God, we can only dilute it. We can only um, fall short from understanding its full meaning. In other words, we cannot exaggerate anything that comes from God. We can only despise it. We can reduce its power because of our lack of understanding or a lot of times the fallen mentality, the very, a very ordinary way of thinking that is incapable of understanding the light of God. The Bible says that the light came, the, 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 the light shone in the earth, in the world. And that light, of course, was Christ. And uh, when that light shone into darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend that light, it means that that darkness was too much that this light was inconceivably greater than the capacity of this darkness to understand it. That the greatness of this light was without measure. It was limitless that it could not comprehend it. But that's exactly what happens. Many times we fail to understand the greatness of this light. What happened to Paul, for instance, Paul received the light from heaven. And what happened to him is that he went blind, he was blind for three days. And Ananiah was sent to pray for him so that he may recover his sight. But you understand that the light was too much that he could not bear with that light and he went blind. So I'm saying that many times we don't have the capacity naturally to comprehend that unfathomable riches of Christ or the greatness of whatever that comes from him. So we underestimate these things because of our lack of understanding. Not because these things are are, are, are small, but they are too much for us. You get it. Glory to God forevermore that our, our eyes and our understanding is also touched. We are touched by His Spirit to understand these divine things. Divine matters requires divine help to comprehend these divine mysteries. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And get, that's why we are introducing something very powerful, and it's called the power of God. I want to talk a little bit about the power of God, because many times some people might think that it is about words, and we are trying to play with words and uh, finding the right communication, playing with vo vocabularies and we to try and convince the audience and the people who hear us. But Paul write to us and many other apostles and the writers in the scriptures and the Bible present to us that that's not the case. It reveals us something very fundamental and he says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, it's a very beautiful verse that I like, one of the best verses you can find in the Bible. It says, For I am not ashamed 
of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. This is an amazing portion of the scripture. And of course, we're not going to talk about this in details, you know, dealing with every, uh, every word that is said here. All I want to focus on is this word, the power of God. Well, Paul says, that For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. First and foremost, we have to come to this conclusion. We have to comprehend that we are dealing with the power of God when we talk about the gospel. I want that to sink first because there's a tendency of ignoring the power of God in the gospel. And uh, again, like I said, because this power is too much, and of course, at times we don't even understand the, the, uh, the scope of this power and how this power manifests itself. And I will try to, to help us understand how this power works because I'm telling you many times, we have a way we think about this power. We have a way we have narrowed, you know, this power. So we understand it in our own way, regardless whether it's true or not. But we have to understand the power according to what is written. And uh, for us to conclude about this power, we have to learn and allow ourselves to be taught by the Bible, by the Word. And I found out that many times we are not easy. We kind of secretly, deep down in us, want to teach uh, the Bible instead of allowing the Bible to teach us. I don't know whether you have ever caught yourself or have ever had people, you listen to them, it's like what they are saying and they're struggling to find a scripture to fit in what they are saying. First, they don't uh, base their point of view on the word first uh, so that whatever they are thinking may come and fall um, on the foundation that was laid by the scripture first, they, they will do it the other way around. They will first think and establish an idea. And then they will look for a scripture to come and fit in what they have concluded to be true. And they don't want to be wrong because they are mixing their opinion with the truth. And that is very, very dangerous. And many might fall in that trap without even knowing. Some well-meaning people, noble souls, they, they, are, they are not right. And many times they'll fall in that trap. They, they might not even know that they, are, they have fallen in that trap, you see. But I'm saying this to help you understand. It's easy for you to come up with your opinion and you, you go for for truth in order for truth to come and um, and complete your opinion <laughs> and this is very dangerous and yet you are supposed to begin with the truth so that your thoughts and your mind may align with the truth if it is not in line with the truth please reject it and that's how we build ourselves in the truth otherwise you might talk about the truth, but you are not serious about the truth and you are not uh, considering the accuracy, the, uh, the way things are supposed to be done and you ignore certain important things, the certainty of what you know about the truth and so on and so forth. Well, Paul then says here that, well, you have to underline this point that for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jews the Jew first and also for the Greek has it occurred to you that uh, we are dealing with the power of God 
my 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 but he also adds the purpose of this power because some people who abuse this power or want this power to operate right in their favor like i also said to actually fulfill their distorted desires if they hate somebody they want that somebody to die so they are praying to god so that the person may die because they don't they don't like him well you want to use the power of god in salvation or in killing when you look at this verse it says for it is the power to salvation you understand that the power of god is connected to salvation that what god will use his power for will be fundamentally the salvation of his people or the salvation of people like i said his power should not be connected to human destruction that god has power to kill you and god has power to destroy you well 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 his power is not supposed to be employed in killing people and his power should not be associated with anything but salvation do you understand this has to be clear in your heart in your mind in your belief system and having said that of course it will help your your beliefs to be aligned and to also destroy any doubt in your heart about the power of god notice that he's saying well first and foremost that the gospel is the power of god and he is desiring to bring about salvation in other words the power this uh, purpose of uh, the power of god is to bring about salvation so god's heart is salvation if god's heart is salvation he will employ his power ability the dynamis of god the energeros of god you see every the is cause the iskus the kratos power of god all kind of power of god to actually change man or to bring about salvation of the world i want you to first be established in your heart that is not about words main there is power in the gospel and notice there is no power under the earth that can bring about salvation in a man like the power of god or the power of the gospel can you imagine that generally when power hits a man any power it can be dangerous because it can destroy this man but imagine that the power of god is so smart it's so wise that he knows how to deal with anything concerning your life and he will destroy the destroyer and destroy anything that is trying to attack you and save you imagine that the power has the mandate to save you but at the same time deal with whatever that is blocking that salvation oh how beautiful this power is this is to say that his power is salvific Shalom shalom